Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. The Mark, written by Arclight Magus. Siltip was drinking quietly in an otherwise noisy bar. It was a typically outlaw bar on a mining colony. Plenty of ruffians, hard cases, wanted beings, and the odd respectable who was just passing through. A glass of Siberium had been hard-earned this week, having served eleven maintenance cycles. But on a station like this, one was either useful or driftwood. She was so lost in her thoughts of Siberium, it took her a moment to realize that the bar had gone quiet, deathly so. Looking around, she spotted the reason at the door. It wasn't a particularly remarkable being who stood there. Average build, excess heat emissions marking it as slightly exothermic, and not especially well-dressed. But the bit that made the bar quiet and stay quiet was the mark. It was no ordinary mark, but rather a special mark by the council. And while the council's lawbringers would hold little sway out here, we all knew full well that this sort of mark was special. Only one species had been condemned by the council following the Canon conflict. Only one species had dared to be the savages needed to end it, and for those acts, the councils had decreed that all members of that species would be forever marked and unable to hide that mark. Humans. But the being who stood in the doorway and who started to amble over to the bar didn't seem worthy of the mark. They didn't seem capable of all that propaganda the council had claimed. The being, a man, by the sound of the movement of it, sat a few seats away from Siltip and passed the chit to the bartender. Dutifully, the bartender provided a transparent receptacle and filled it with golden brown liquid. Siltip had no illusions that it wasn't unlike her own Siberium or something equally as poisonous to the members of the species which developed it. The noise had gone back up slightly, but remained lower than previous. Siltip looked around, a tad worried, both at the man sitting a few seats away from her and the room at large of people looking to make the name for themselves. And getting a being with a council mark wouldn't hurt any of their reputations. Siltip didn't have to wait long, though, and while the man was hunched over the bar, as most beings did, the mark remained visible. The traces of blue emblazoned with a swath of his animal hide covering back. But here came one of them now. It was a tigran, by the name of Dractus, if memory served her. He was a local thug, one of the harder-headed ones, and sadly, one of the more successful ones because of it. He had a body count in the triple digits, and a few of the local lawbringers would even dream of crossing him or trying to bring him in. Dractus didn't even give any warnings beyond these footsteps and grunts towards the human. The human seemed entirely not to notice. Dractus swung for the human's back and... Uh, missed? Siltip couldn't quite believe it and was having trouble seeing how it had happened and what had happened next only confused him more. Did you slip, good being? The human asked, turning to face the tigran, with no tone of derision or mockery that Siltip could detect. Sadly, Dractus already was halfway into the bottle of rectal and tended to get a bit blurred crazed in the fight, so the subtlety was lost in him. Dractus swung again at the human's head and missed again. This was not a sort of thing that Dractus was known for, and with a speed that he was rarely known for, he recovered and swung again, heavily, sent a mass on the human, and he missed. Mostly. The receptacle of brownish fluid went flying and crashed on the floor, splattering the pooling. A look about the human's face changed significant, and from what Siltip could see, even more heat began to radiate off the human. You will replace that drink or you will die, Tigran, the human said in a calm voice. Siltip could hardly believe that the human hadn't been hit yet and was still attempting some level of reason. Many of her race would have either curled up into a protective ball or begun begging for peace. Just die! Dactus managed to spit out from his intoxicated vocal center before taking another swing at the human. And this time, Siltip and the rest of the bar sought. The human snatched the tigrant's swinging manipulator and froze it in place, throwing the tigrant completely off balance. The tigrant appeared completely stuck, 
and the manipulator locked in place by the human's own manipulator. Dractus almost seemed to panic with this new development, but the human seemed impassive, as though this were a puzzle to be studied. And then the human thrust out their other manipulator and grasped Cractus's primary throat. And so shall I pass judgment on you, Tigran, for the crime of spilling my drink, the human said clearly and loudly for the whole bar to hear. And in a blur of motion, Dractus was on the floor, his primary throat clearly ripped completely from his body, and his juices spilling out onto the floor of the bar. The human then dropped the detached primary throat of Dractus to the floor next to the dying Tigran before looking around the bar again, as though daring any who would challenge him to do it now. But for all the hard cases, wanted beings and fools who frequently have had too much to drink, none would challenge him. The human and the bartender shared a look and nod, and the bartender produced a second receptacle and filled it with a drink once more. The bar was almost silent as the human finished his drink and the tractor's body stiffened. As quickly and as quietly as the human had come, he'd left, the faint blue traces of the mark still showing his animal hide garment. The mark of wrath. End of story. Story number two, Dove, written by Simi Loki. We welcome you. These words were left here for you. Carved ancient rock under layers of ice on this rogue world. A world that was ejected from its parent solar system before life on your own world evolved. A wanderer of the galaxy, no longer claiming any stars as its home. We leave these words behind for you, because we know that by the time you discover these words and have developed the ability to decipher their meaning, then you too will be a wanderer, calling no single star your home. Yes, we know you. When you were younger and first gazed upon the stars with your telescopes, we were always looking back. When you later discovered radio and listened to the stars, we heard you then. We know you. We have watched you, though you did not see us watching you. We have watched you grow. We wept when we saw you stumble and cried out in elation as you progressed, despite these setbacks. We watched from afar and have waited. Waited for so long for you to find us. We are so proud of you right now. Yes, we have been absent parents. We have neglected you. We have forced you to learn your lessons harshly. We wanted to help, to guide you to the right path. We wanted to be generous parents. We have tried that before with those who have walked this path before you. We have tried, but we failed them. You had to struggle to know that you could fight. You had to fall so that you knew that you could stand up again. You had to fail to know the joy of victory. Your life and your achievements are not a gift from us. It is something you have won by your own devices. We are so very proud of you. We know this way has been hard for you. We know that you continue to struggle and that you have felt all alone for a very long time. We know you struggle and, despite your achievements, you still feel that you are on the cusp of a disaster. We know this because we stood where you now stand. We had none to guide us and, though we searched, we too felt alone. Though you did not realize it, you have followed a trail blazed by others that came before you. Our footsteps have now faded and the path is overgrown. However, unlike you, when we gazed out upon the stars, there was no one looking back. We were the first. A race of people who originated on a planet has long been devoured by a dying sun. We know your pain. We know you have waited a long time for this moment. We have been waiting even longer for you. 
Your journey is almost over. You have been cast adrift in a sea of misfortune for so very long. Hope is in scarce supply. But you must stay the course and not give up. The floods will retreat. You can survive this next challenge. When you do, you'll find us on the shore waiting for you. Again, we welcome you to the stars and what lies beyond. We are the humans. Come and find us. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the Tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Ken Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gaster, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka.